So look at the behavior, the direction of the lines of the features you're looking at. And you can ghost them. And if you can't quite see it, ghost it on the computer, on the, on the photograph so that you can see if it's, you know, compare it to a vertical. Now it looks like I'm drawing the edge of the hook, but I'm actually drawing the edge of the negative space. That's what my brain is thinking. I'm drawing the edge of the negative space so I can color the negative space in and let the hook pop out. You know, the hook shares the edge with the negative space. And then there's a fold right here. And that fold is darker. That part of the fold is darker. So if you, what I'm doing when I'm drawing is I'm reading the image. I'm reading, I'm not just drawing what I see. I'm like, I'm reading what I'm seeing. And so when I go to draw it, my brain helps me, you know, what I know and what I see is sort of coming together to help me decipher what I'm looking at. And again, in this area, I'm not, I'm drawing the negative space, which is gonna let that pop out a little bit more, that positive space pop out a little bit more. So all of this area, it's not solid dark, some areas are darker than hey, others, Jessica. but it's pretty dark. So I'm gonna get the darkest areas first. And it's a little, it's a little bit distorted, but it's, it's okay. And then lighten up my pressure so that I can convey that there's folds going on. For your darkest values, how often do you sharpen your pencils? Well, I should, this is too dull. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, if you could see my desk and how messy everything is, and you know, cause I'm working in this kind of small space. I mean, the space is not small, but the desk is really small. So I'm gonna sharpen my, I'm just gonna sharpen it over here. So there, that's better. See that? <laughs> and so I'm mapping out these light and darks, but I'll go back and do more detail later. Right now I'm just mapping out the, the lights and darks and letting it build so that I can start seeing more and more of the, you know, the overall form and structure. So I'm blocking in, that's the name for it, blocking in those uh, low key values. And now up in here, this is not super dark, but it's darker than the stuff next to it. So I'm still using a 4B, but I might wanna switch to like a B pencil here. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna just map in a few more of these low key, these mid key values before I switch. Like this, this, this object here is this. So I want the hook. 
see how I'm drawing through to get the correct curvature of the hook? And it's parallel, this part of the hook is parallel to that part. So that's just noticing. And then what's behind it is just a little bit darker to make that feature, this feature thing, this thing pop out. And yeah, it's a little distorted. It's not exactly what I'm, it's, it's more or less what I'm looking at. It's out of proportion just a little bit because I'm drawing fast and not really paying attention to proportion. This thing is, this is white here. And this is darker here. It goes up and matches that. Again, it is off. I see that the proportions are off, but it, it's still going to look good. So I don't care. I'm going to use the behavior of what's going on there. That is a cast shadow of this thing. So you want to um, get those features of that thing. So it looks like a cast shadow of the rope, which are these bumps that are important. And then the rope itself, I'm leaving the rope itself white for now, as I can go back and work on that later. So right now I'm citing those edges. I'm not just putting there, I've actually cited them so that I can get the correct angle. And then I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the alignment of the top of the head where it aligns with this stuff. So I can actually just draw a little rectangle where that thing's gonna go. I'm just, opening up a little bit of space to play with. And then I'm not gonna go detail on this thing yet, I'm just gonna place it. See how loose I'm being? I'm paying attention to the form it's made out of. Kind of like an egg shape with wings. I'll go back and do details later, I'm just placing it now. And I'm keeping it very loose when I'm placing it because I might want to make some changes so that it will fit in proportion to everything else, right? 
I'm just placing it. So there, very loose drawing of that thing that I'll go back to in a minute. I wanna just see. So I, just, I want it to be a little taller. So Grace, you see how I'm just scrubbing out the value? That medium value that I put down there? Okay, so now I'm gonna map in some of that, um, the stuff that's going on in the negative space. So here's that full, I'm aligning the top of the owl shadow with that hook. Yeah, and it's all way too, that cast shadow needs to be smaller. It's all way too big. So let me look at the, let me look at, so I don't, so I just need to make that owl cast shadow smaller. Getting a little too carried away here. There we go. And then the stuff that's around the owl is a little lighter, the make the cast shadow. So I can lift some of that out to make that a little lighter and then come back in and make this shadow darker. So I'm thinking of the shadow right now as the negative space and no, it's not the right proportions. I understand that because I'm I'm going too fast to really map in the correct proportions. But I this this bend is important because that's a cross contour of the fold. So this bend is important. You know, these bends that are happening here are mimicking this fold. So now you're adding and subtracting. So now I'm going to lift out some of the lighter areas again. you in a minute. Okay, yeah, go away. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> so 
want to show you guys something for a second. You see that? This thing? She's hungry. She's like, I'm, I'm, you're talking, but you're not talking to me. I'm confused. Are you going to feed me? What's going on? Okay. Okay, so um, now I need I need some more. Let I'm been using a four B, and now I just need to I need to back off of that graphite and just start coming in here and doing some details. I'm going to use a two B and try and map in, and I'm going to scale. I can't I can't quite see what's going on, so I'm going to scale that up. And because I laid out the general area, it doesn't matter how big I scaled it up, I can still use the, the proportions of the general area that I laid out to help me map in this out. And I'm, I'm drawing very light. So that if I make mistakes, I, I can I have room to go back. And yes, there's features on the owl, but I'm not looking at the features. I'm looking at the lights and darks. So right here, I see that there's a darker area. There's a form shadow here. It's lighter in the back because there's a, a reflective shadow. And then the negative space is a little bit dark, which helps. And then this is this edge is darker in that area, but the ridge is lighter. And then this is all a medium value.
So I'm getting lazy, but if I do my ellipse with the axis of rotation in the correct place, then I can get the right proportions. See how I'm drawing an ellipse and the axis of rotation is vertical. It helps me get the right. So it's probably should be a little further back. And then this stuff is all darker around the feet. In between the feet, toes or whatever those are, talons. And again, I can't quite see what's going on there. I mean, it's not it's not clear. I mean, it's it's. I'm just looking at the pattern of lights and darks. This texture on the owl, I would map out the pattern of the texture first, like a pineapple. First and then come back in. So it's kind of like a pineapple. And then your sections. They're not super detailed. So you don't want to draw them super detailed because they're not super detailed. You're just hinting at them. And I'm not going to do all of them. I'll come back to those in a second. So I'm going to put in some of those other shadows, get this negative space. So the lightest part is not, it's the, the, the back edge of the wing is lighter because of reflective shadows. And then the negative space behind that wing is darker to pop out the wing. So even the even though the brick looks dark, it's actually in relationship to the owl, it's not that dark. So we need to make this owl darker. And here's here's a good place where the erasure comes into play. If I do the form shadow on the owl first, rather than try to draw it like I did a second ago. Oops, it's lightest in this strip. Then you can come back in with an eraser and erase out the pattern rather than trying to draw in the pattern, you erase out the pattern and then it's easier to go back in at details. I act that dark mark is an 8B. I accidentally picked up an 8B. I didn't mean to. Every day I go outside and this dog has destroyed something else. 
Oh, she's got me paranoid. So it, it would behoove me to sharpen my pencil in this area because it's very tight, but I'm being lazy. And that rope, the little thing that's on the owl is actually not dark. See, it's light. So you can come back in and erase that right down out. And then you can come back in and put the, the form shadow of it in there and a little bit of the edge. And it isn't white either, but it's kind of, um, so I didn't outline it with one value. I kind of put a range of values. And then I'm gonna just mimic some of this texture in here. Right, Cause it's not very clear. I'm just going to follow along with the pattern that I established and then kind of mimic it a little more than draw it. Okay, so, me, so now I need to back this thing back out. And then maybe map in this, this cast shadow back here of this plant is important to the composition. Treat that as negative space and leave the leaves of the plant lighter. Okay, so this is tricky right here because the, the owl is darker. When you squint your eyes, you can see that the owl is a little darker than the. You guys, hold on a second. Let me see if I can. Okay. 
my, my alarm never goes off. I don't know why it's going off. So right here, how I'm gonna handle this area is I'm actually gonna treat, treat the, We could have some of that. I, I don't know where my YouTube background, background music. Okay, so was that your car? Yeah, it was my car, but I don't know why it's doing that. Never have issues with it, and I should know because I'm always in it. So I'm going to do something that I wouldn't normally do. This is an eight B, and an eight B pencil is really the equivalent of a black. Um, colored pencil. I'm going to use just, I'm not pressing very hard because if I press hard, it's going to look really like too different of a medium. I'm not pressing very hard. I'm going to just lay out some, you know, it helps get rid of the sheen a little bit. And it gives me just a little bit bump in the darkness. And then I can go back on top of that you know, this object is dark. So I can go back on top of that with graphite to, to, to bring it back to mend the, you know, so you see how it looks like a different medium? That's because there's the binder that's in the 8B is a little bit waxier than the binder that's in the 6B. So I can go over that with graphite and pull that texture back, the texture of the 8B back. Just give me a little bump in the darkness. And I'll use like a, a B, I'll use a B pencil to get some of the values of the, beat in there to refine those a little bit because the B pencil won't go as dark. Keep in mind, you need to look at the overall drawing, not the details. So right now we're concentrating on the details, but I'm looking at, I'm also looking at the overall drawing, this thing in contrast with the overall drawing. And the drawing looks better to me than it's going to, to you translating in the camera like that. Okay. I gotta go outside and open that. I don't know why it's doing that. It, uh, Okay, um, so Okay, so you see all this paper texture? 
I can go in there with like a 2B now. Um, okay, so this, like this area right here, now with a really sharp pencil, I can go in there and then just tighten some of that up. Okay, so the, the edge of that planter is white from being, that's the reflection. So that's important. And then it, there's a strip, there's a strip that's a little darker. I'll handle the top in a minute. It's out of proportion with the owl, but that's okay, it's okay. No one looking at this is gonna know the difference, except for the person who took the photograph. And this area over here is a little darker. There's a rock in there, it looks like. A little texture. So giving, drawing a border gives you the ability to make mistakes. And if you have gone too small, you can just extend it out a little bit. No one's gonna be the wiser. And then these leaves are a little distorted, so I can just, I'm gonna exaggerate them a little bit so that they're more prominent in the composition. And then here's where I'll, I can't quite see what's going on there. So here's where I can enhance it and just, and the, you know, the clearer your photograph that you take of your images, the better so that you can see. So help me just map in. And it's kind of texture so I'm just gonna, you see how I'm doing the texture? I'm just rigorously moving my hand around and letting the mark look kind of more like a texture. I'm just gonna pretend like there's a leaf there because something happens there and I can't see it. So I'm just gonna put a leaf there. So I go back and forth from the positive to the negative space. Instead of drawing the positive space, sometimes I stop and draw the negative space to, to pop the positive space out. And then I can go back in. This is a 2B, so maybe with a, an H pencil or a B pencil, I'll just, I can go back in and lay a value on top of that leaf. And then I can go back in and maybe add a few more values with the 2B on top of it to make it look more than just one solid color. And maybe I'm gonna exaggerate with my 6H, my 6B. So 
So the shadow that I have back here is not as dark as I have it, but that's where as an artist, if I want to make the shadow darker to, to help my composition, then that's my prerogative. None of these leaves is white. They're lighter and darker, but not white. And then if, if, every, if anything in here is too dark, see, by the time I got to these past, these back leaves, I just kind of made up a texture, which is also my prerogative. Okay, so if I wanted to lighten that whole area up, for any reason, I can just take my kneaded eraser, make sure it's flat and I can just stamp that out and just lighten it up just a little bit. But maintaining some of those details. So I'm going to take an H pencil and I'm going to lift up some of this. Some of it, leave some of it, lift some of it up and maybe render. This brick. And because I, uh, I'm using an H pencil, I don't have to worry so much about my pressure because the H is automatically lighter. Okay, and I'm just keep in mind I'm brushing. I don't I don't typically uh, draw this fast necessarily. Overhead lights are really bright. Okay, so and then this brick here, see how it's lighter on this edge than it is on this edge? So then I can go back with my eraser and just use, it's got lines, so I can just, I can actually just, You can use a stencil and cover up that line. And just put these verticals in. Uh, 
And then in between the verticals, you have very dull pencil again. So in between those verticals, then you have this, some of these darker areas. I'll do the dark crevices first and then come back and do some of those. Hey, don't look my way. And I'm not, I'm not being exact. I'm mimicking. I'm looking at that thing. I could be exact. I'd have to take more time and really stare. But what I'm doing is I'm just kind of looking at the behavior and mim mimicking the behavior. Try to be a little irregular. And then I'll take like the 2H pencil and come in and do some of those medium values. I just did the low key. Now I'm going to do some of those medium values. I'm going to exaggerate this. Right up here. But I'm using a 2H now, so I don't have to worry too much about pressure because it's not going to go any darker than what you're seeing there. So that's why it's important to switch. If you're using a 2B or a B pencil through the whole thing, you're, it's just going to get too muddy. You won't be able to get this variety of values. And then I'll take a, I'm going to exaggerate this. This is actually lighter. This edge over here, this is actually a little bit lighter than the brick. So I can cover up the brick and just pop that out a little bit. If I can make that brick a little bit darker, I'm not putting texture on the brick yet because I want to get the, the local color, you know, the value relationships first. All right, so now I want to I want to just kind of look at this thing overall. Squint my eyes. This needs to be darker over here. So now I'm not looking at details. Now I'm just going to take a break from looking at the details. Come back in and I'm squinting my eyes and looking at I'm, squint your eyes and look at the two and you'll see yourself that this over here is needs to be a little bit darker. And again, I'm going fast. If I want these marks to be more delicate, then I have to slow down. There's no way to get delicate marks when you're going this, this fast. The owl is actually too straight. So I'm going to manipulate that a little bit.
and now I know more what I'm looking at because I worked on the L. So now I know that this bump right here is actually the base and it's not the. So I'm going to switch to a 3H now and then do some of these um, values on this curtain thing. The curtain is, is a high key value. So by using my H pencils, I can maintain the high key value contrast between the, the, the curtain drapery. And those uh, strong shadows. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna render this whole thing with 3H light. I'm not pressing really hard. I'm just gonna put down a, a light value all the way across it. Because it's easier for me to lift up. Right. the highlights than it is for me to draw around them. <laughs> Just a minute. And see how I can just go right over the darker stuff? I don't have to go around it. That's why it's better to do the darker stuff first, because when you go to do the middle values and the high key values, you can just go right on top of the darker stuff without losing anything. So I'm making that whole curtain a medium, a light, kind of a light. It's still a high key value. And I'm just going to tighten up some of this other stuff with my, I'm using a 3H. So see how when I go over what the darker stuff with the 3H, it does still get darker. It's actually spreading around some of those values, some of that graphite powder. And then I can take my eraser Come back in here and lift. Okay, come on, come on, I'll take. So then you can take the eraser and come in here and lift out the high the highlights, the really light areas, because there's actually fewer of them. There's not as much white in this image as it looks, as it, you know, when you squint your eyes and you really look, 
at the at the photograph there's not a lot of whites in there there's a lot of low there's a lot of high key values but they're not just they're not just the white of the paper I'm exaggerating the cast shadow of the owl because compositionally, the shape, you know, don't think of it as an owl, think of it as a shape right now. And remember those compound shape relationships, the shape of this, of this uh, cast shadow back here, I need it. It's actually becoming the most, you know, kind of the focal point of the drawing. So uh, just when you're drawing, if you don't want the cash shadow to be the focal point of the drawing, you just need to not make it as dark. As you can see, I can make, I'm making it much darker than it actually is. This does not look like what you're seeing because I'm faking it. Now I'm faking some things. I know the behavior of folds, and so I'm going to fake a fold here. Because I need some negative space to make this brick pop out. And I'm going to fake some sort of fold there so the brick pops out a little bit. Maybe I'll exaggerate the light behind the brick. So I want this. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. So see, it, it looks a lot better not on the camera. Um, okay. So if you squint your eyes and you look at this and you squint your eyes and look at that, you can see where you need to go back, like right on top of, you know, so there's too much brightness going on in some of those areas on the owl. So I would use not a B pencil, but like an H pencil or 2H. To, to just color right over this whole section and make some of that, that form shadow darker, right? You see what I'm saying? And then um, clean up, maybe clean up this edge a little bit with a really sharp 6B so that the dark is on the owl because the field of negative space behind the owl is lighter. So I would just really sharp, not a hard line, but just a, a sharper edge. And then um, I didn't do the details here, but this would take me, I would probably just take an eraser and really, really scrub out all of the graphite on these areas, on these two details, and then use like a, maybe like an, a 2H or a mechanical pencil, a 0.3 mechanical pencil and blow this up really big and then just follow the line. I just drawing what I see, follow the line. And then maybe I would go back in and take, lighten up 
Now, I don't think I want any lighter because if you squint your eyes, the value here kind of looks like the value there. So you don't want it any lighter, but I but the, to do the wood texture, I would just follow the lines. Use a 6B pencil and just follow the lines and create that wood texture and then darken in this whole area. Like um, I can, so I use the 6B to draw this down in here. I would use maybe like a B or an H and draw right on top of it so that I maintain the difference in value between this and this, but this is not as light as it is. So I would want this all to be, actually when you squint your eyes, this is all darker. That would make this look lighter, right? And then look here, this disappears. So I would just need to right, to bring this edge back up, just get my uh, kneaded eraser and block this up and bring this edge back up. And then these just, and now, so basically if this is an underdrawing, Right? If this is your underdrawing, then you can just go and you're happy with the composition, you can just go to one feature at a time. So think of the brick as, you know, the face of the brick, this plane of the brick is one feature. This plane of the brick is two, you know, think of them as shapes. This is a shape, planar shape. This is a planar shape. You have the shape of the owl overlapping. You have the shape of this planter and the leaves. You have the shape of the negative space that go with the leaves. You have the shape of this negative space that goes with the owl. You have the shape of this negative space. And then the shape of this whole positive space, you can think of as, you know, just a different area to work on. So then you concentrate on to make these uh, details pop out. You want to really erase up everything and clean up the white space. So it pops out from this area right behind it. Same thing here, just erase out the white space so it pops out and then you can go back with a 2H and just do the details. Um, does that make sense?